and I believe, first of all, I, I, I discovered this when I wasn't looking for it. Um, success, it is easier to succeed than it is to fail. It's just easier on the opposite end, on the opposite end. Success and failure are both, they both have their level of difficulty. If like, if you're going to succeed, it's hard on the front end, easier on the back end. If you're going to struggle, easy on the front end. I'm going to give you the formula for struggle. Do the easy thing now. There, there it is. There's the formula for struggle for the rest of life. Do the easy, convenient thing right now. And you can, congratulations, you get to struggle for the rest of your life. However, if you do the hard thing first, and you get the hard stuff out of the way early, success becomes easy. See, what you don't realize is we've been programmed to buy the lie that in order for an answer to be right, it has to be hard to come by, which is why some of the hardest people in the world to coach to have success, in my opinion, are the ones who have the most so-called education. The smart people. They're so smart, they can't get out of their own way. And they, they look, they ignore the easy answers that are right in front of them and go looking for hard answers that are in the booth in the back, in the corner in the dark, under a rock that's filled with fire ants, right? Because that has to be the right answer. I'm Indiana Jones. This is my temple of doom. No, you're not Indiana Jones. And it's not your success. It's not in your temple of doom. It just doesn't work like that. And one of the things I that helped me discover this, I was having, I was having a conversation with a coaching client one day and I said, how's business? That seems like a fairly simple question, right? How's business, right? They said, I'm really trying. And like when they said it, it just hit me. It's really fascinating because I'm not really trying. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not even trying at all. Like there's no sweat happening here. There's no toil. There's no hustle. There's no grind. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't confused. So I called one of my mentors, Jerry Clark. I called Jerry on the phone. I said, Jerry, can I ask you a question? Are you trying to succeed? You know what he did? He laughed. He said, you're trying to succeed? What do you mean am I trying to succeed? You succeed. There's no try. So I'm going to leave that right there. If you don't know who that guy is, he is Myron Golden. Myron is, he is indeed a beast. Oh my goodness. He is no joke. I, I recently, uh, it's been probably over a year that I found out about uh, Myron and I listen to him every morning. So you have guessed, this is not Pam Pacheco. This is not Pam the plug, but I get the honor and the privilege to be able to stand in for Pam. I'm Lisa Burton, also known as Lisa from Philly when I'm on Zoom. So I am, um, just to give you a little bit about myself, if you have no idea who I am and you're like, wait a minute, what? Why does this person not look like who was on the screen? <laughs> so I, I am born and raised in Philly, still live here. I am happily retired from 25 years in policing, spent most of my career as a detective. And I, I'm a I'm new retiree. I retired in 2021. That was my first. That was my second career. My first career, I was an operating room nurse, 10 of my 12 years in nursing before I switched gears and went into policing. And I enjoy being a part of our Viago community because I still get to continue to help people and have a positive impact. You know, with, with both of my careers, with policing and nursing, at their core, they're about helping people. But here... We get to help people and have like way more fun. So I'm excited to be able to be here for Pam and shout out to all of you who are on because you thought it enough to invest in yourself, to start off the morning with um, something that's going to be inspiring or motivating or definitely fun. If you, I don't know, I, I'm going to be laughing. I'm going to assume you're going to be laughing too, because we're going to have some fun. So we're going to get into one of my favorite topics. And you know what? Um, so give me a little bit of grace because this is my first time sitting in Pam's seat. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got buttons to push. I got stuff to put on, uh, you know, make sure it's recording. I'm like, don't 
if, if I break anything inside of her, her webinar, I'm going to say it's somebody else's fault. It's not my fault. I'm going to blame it on my BFF, Denise. She told me to do blah, blah, blah. And that's why it didn't work out. <laughs> but do me a favor. Tell me, please, in the, in the chat, where are you coming from? I see we got Chicago in the building. We got Philly in the building. You know, I know that um, I know. I would like to believe that everybody is from Philly because we're going to have a, a hometown thing. But I know that we're not. I know we got a couple other places. Yes, Candace from Atlanta. I got so I got some friends here in the room with me. We're going to have some fun. Grand rising to Yessi. Good to see you again as well. So one of my favorite topics is, and hopefully it will bring some value to you. It's something that we do all the time. We talk, we communicate. But one thing that is super important is that words matter. And how we say stuff matters. It, it, it can convey different things depending on what you're gonna be, what you say to somebody. So early on, um, I'm gonna say it's probably been about two years. So early on coming here to Viago, uh, I, had, I had just stumbled onto a guy named Big Al Schreider. The man is a beast when it comes to how to say things and what to say when. And he's big on putting things out there. So it almost like you're getting around, be, feeling a sense of rejection. So he's big on being able to pose something to somebody and make it so that they want more information from you. So I, I'm not even fronting. I'm going to put, I got my notes here because I get to flex and say that because I'm 60, I'm gonna I'm gonna flex my I'm 60 years old muscles. So because I'm 60, if I don't use some notes, this probably would not be good. And we'd end up somewhere that I didn't plan for us to go. But you know what? Based on what Myron said, drop it in the chat since he was talking about and he was kind of joking about trying, drop it in the chat if you've ever not tried to succeed. So I may think, what, what the heck do you mean by I didn't try to succeed? But it, it takes some conditioning to just go and do what you're supposed to do to succeed because we are so programmed to trying. So think about that. And while we continue on, um, I'm going to thank you, Dewey. Thank you very much. Um, so you, you're feeling me on this. So one thing that can help us with succeeding is how we say things. When we're talking to uh, a prospect, somebody that we want to show what we got going on. And that's where I have leaned on Big Al and have, his full name is Big Al, Tom Schreider. I guess his, his nickname is Big Al Schreider. But he has a couple of books that I've read several times and mainly because to get what he's saying in my head so it becomes a natural thing for me to say, whether it's it's a business or a selling conversation or it's just a conversation that I'm having with somebody else. And I'm hoping that you would get some value from this the way that I have. So he says, one of the biggest programs in our mind is survival because many and most of our decisions are based on survival. For instance, if you're walking down a about to walk down what's like a dark alley, hmm, you might want to be walking with somebody else or a couple of people versus by yourself because it's just just instinctual to want to be in a group or be with other people just for that fact of self preservation. So it's that survival program that makes people skeptical. They're like, mm, "Are you trying to take some money from me?" Are you trying to absorb some of my time? That's what puts out that, uh, that, that barrier of, am I going to be tricked here? That survival, that automatic survival program. So he says that we got to talk to people's subconscious mind, because really it's the subconscious mind that runs the show, not the conscious mind. And I promise you, I'm, if you know the colors, I'm a green, yellow person, but I promise you I won't go too far down a rabbit hole. So... He says, when we're talking, we got to deliver our message to that subconscious mind. I'll give you an example. And he says it's with some, he calls them magic words. 
that get it done because you know most people would want to know what those magic words are so that most people can then use them over and over again to get you know get a positive result get some success so guess what one of those one of those words is most people it, it just naturally flows into the conversation and here's the here's his his mindset behind it that uh, going back to survival mode most people puts in your mind yeah i'm most people i'm not less people I'm like most people because I don't want to be standing out by myself. So that have somebody that has somebody buy into that that mindset. I'm sorry, that has somebody buy into what you're saying just with those simple words of most people. For instance, let me think of a good one. Most people would rather save on taxes. Nobody's going to say, nah, I pass. I'd rather pay more taxes. You know, most most people would rather go on vacation for themselves and, and experience travel instead of looking at somebody else's pictures on Facebook or on social media. So you can see how it's like, yeah, yeah, that's me. You, you, if it's not a physical head nod, it's an internal head nod. And it's it's a tiny thing that helps put people on the same page with us so that they can, we can build rapport because with he he is big on teaching building rapport to open somebody's mind to speak to their subconscious to be able to have them open to sharing with you sharing or us sharing what we got going on. I'm, let me come up with another good one. Well, you, well, you know how most people want to have fun when they go travel and be able to go and not have to worry about how we're going to get picked up. You know, what's the, what's the, the resort really going to be like? That was another one of his ones. Well, you know how you could, you can put that almost in front of, front of anything. When we would talk about um, like booster. So um, my husband is, he, we both are big on taking our nutritional supplement booster because he was one of those people that sat on the side of the bed and then could get up and get going when he first woke up. So you know how most people, they, they don't want to be dragging themselves out of the bed. They want to feel refreshed in the morning. And that it, I love how his, his, his tips just, you can immediately use them in your everyday language and doing that, making it a habit so that then when you're talking to somebody and it's a business conversation, those type of phrases just start flowing off of your tongue and you, you really get to sharpen your skills of how to say things and having your, your ratio of people realizing Viago got what I want and saying, yep, where here's my credit card. Where do I sign up? Whatever, whatever that language looks like. So another way to throw in, well, you know how. So you're having a conversation with somebody and they're like, hey, well, what do you do? Well, you know how most people want to in have champagne lifestyle on a soda budget, not break the bank when they're going on uh, vacation or somewhere. I'll show people how to how to have that, how to have a champagne lifestyle on a soda budget. If you ever like to know how, I'll be glad to tell you. So it gets people to want to know more about what you got going on just from these simple words. Another one of his is, for example, I like this one. So um, we have a, a new friend who has just recently joined Viago. She was looking, she's coming to Elevate. And she was looking at, uh, she saw our pricing on, on our Club Viago website. And of course, like most people, when you're new, you may say, is this, how good is this pricing really? And, and maybe go on Expedia, Travelocity, whatever was a previous booking engine that you used in the past. And if I, I could use what she told me and it fit right into a, a great story, using one of his, uh, using one of his uh, magic words. So say I was talking to Sue 
Yo, Sue, I got a, I got a, a friend. She just got started. I'm excited for her. And she was, she went to, she went to see how much are the rooms that we're going to be for where we're going to be staying. It, it was, it was a shock to her. So, for example, imagine you're talking to somebody that, and you're telling them about the benefits of coming to our national convention, and you have a, you say, hey, well, you know what? Most people want to save and don't want to overpay. I have a friend, for example, she went looking on another site. She compared it to what was on our site and the room difference, apples to apples, it was four, on our site, it was $400 cheaper. So I think I just squeezed in most people, for example, well, you know how, all in all in one ex, one situation, one one example. Here's another one, one of my favorites. Um, would it be okay if? Because it's kind of like a polite way of asking somebody for their permission. So if we're talking, say it's uh, Denise and she's not my BFF. We're going to going to use her in a, as an example of somebody that I just know. And she says, "Hey, well, what you what are you doing since you're retired?" And I'm like, "You know what? I, I at first off, retirement that that was the best adult decision I have ever made. I enjoy the time freedom, and I got an online business that I'm having a lot of fun with. Would it be okay if I showed you what I got going on? So." That's like, hey, that's way different than, hey, um, I'm retired. I'm having fun. I want to show you what I'm doing. Um, come here. Can you, can you sit down for a second? Two totally different things. Two totally different ways of saying, trying to get the same point across, but way different language. I, li I like this one. I haven't really um, used it yet. He has so many different examples. I just have like a good four or five that I I use in my everyday language. So then when I'm having a business conversation, it's very naturally flowing. And I would encourage you to do the same thing because we know if we do something over and over again, it becomes a habit. It flows easily. It flows naturally. So if we're talking about and you, we're already into being able to share Viago and we're talking about the the opportunity for income well there a hundred percent you can make without making a uh, without giving any income claims you you can make 300 to 500 dollars a month or or even more but there's a catch it's tied to your effort so little effort little money no effort i promise you no money big effort big money Guess which one was the phrase? There's a catch. Because we may we may come across some people that they already are expecting, hey, this is too good to be true. Hey, there must be a catch. Well, yeah, if we put that out there from the door, yeah, there's a catch. But they're not going to be expecting you to say what we're going to say after that. There's a there's a catch. And it could be so, so many things. Hey, we 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 have a ball here in Viago, and it would be it'd probably be pretty cool for you if you joined us. But there's a catch. We don't want anybody to be a member who doesn't want to be a member. But another one of my favorites is I'm just curious. So don't judge me. You know, I spent 25 years in policing, and I was. And most of that, being a detective, I asked a lot of questions. So I didn't have to be as, I could be very direct in some, most times or get around it in, in other ways by being a little bit more softer with my approach. It really depended on the situation, but I'm just curious, I'm telling you. You can pretty much almost ask anybody a question putting, I'm just curious in front of it. Hey, um, let me pick somebody. Hey, Kim, I'm just curious. What's your social security number? 
No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm not, not going to be asking for anybody's social security number. But say you're ha we're having a conversation and you've had, you've asked, hey, what what do you do for a living? Hey, we're, you know, I'm I'm from Philly. Where are you from? Hey, I, I'm just curious. How, how many kids do you have? You may, you know, whatever answer you get. You know, I, I've been married for 26 years. And, you know, it's, it's, it's work, but it's worth the work. You, you know how most people think that whether somebody is married and they think that singlehood is a life or if they are single, they think that married is a life. Well, most people realize that it's, they're, they're just different. It's not one is better than the other, better than the other, other. But I'm curious, what do you like to do for fun? I, I, I love doing blah, 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 blah. So though asking questions that are information gathering that we can be able to see what is somebody's priority, what, what, what do they lean to, what do they like to have fun with and be able to use that information to build rapport and move us to the being able to show them Viago, whether it's through a video, through a presentation, hopping on a Zoom with somebody or whatever. And one of his ones that is pretty cool is, huh, I use this or, uh, and I would encourage anybody to use it as well. Denise and I like run this one in the hole when we would be doing demos and with the salt and oil scrub and eliciting, getting from somebody what they, how, how do your hands feel? So, you know, you know, we all know what that looks like when somebody is doing a demo, the water gets poured on their hands and just the facial expressions are priceless and they're, and entertaining for us. If you're not having fun, if you've ever done a demo or seen one with our salt and oil scrub, it's, it, it, it's worth the price of admission for sure. So when somebody has just finished their the salt and oil scrub and maybe they're drying their hands, they're like, tell me, what what do your hands feel like? And what, whatever the response is, oh, they feel really soft. Oh, they, they never, I never felt anything like this. So imagine your whole body feeling that soft. His word is imagine. Because guess what? He, I love how, I love how he puts it. It, that starts, the the movie projector in your mind going when you when you when we share with somebody that word imagine imagine blah 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 imagine being on an escape and you came there with maybe two people you and your friend you and your spouse you and your boo and you leave there with five more people because we just have that kind of fun that that starts that movie projector going if i if i said to you right now so uh, imagine being on an island and sitting under a tree you're going to automatically you can't not not think about that and you're you're going to be imagining what that looks like in your mind uh whether it's a palm tree a big shade tree but you are imagining the thing not the the word T R E E. So it's great how that's how that's how our minds work. So those are those are like the the major ones that I use. And it I pulled them from his book is called well one of his books that that I've read and would encourage anybody to read is how to get your prospects attention and keep it. The the man is phenomenal. He has some um, amazing books that whether we're seasoned in the game or we're new in the game and you just need some, you just need, I just need, we just need some tips getting started on how to say something, how to, how to even approach somebody, how to build rapport, even if it's somebody who you already, already know is it's good to reignite that fire, reignite that rapport to then be able to transition into showing them what we got going on. But 
as I, before I end, I wanted to circle back to Myron because we began with him and he is, if you have never heard Myron Golden, he is a beast. He is a very successful, wealthy man. Actually started off in the industry of network marketing, but he has made millions of dollars on with sales because he, he is a, he has a coaching program for executive level entrepreneurs to help them grow their business, scale their business. So he's big on talking about selling and, and the, there's some myths around it, some mistakes around it. Two of his biggest mistakes is that um, people think that we're people who sell think that they're selling to somebody and not for them. And it's about his mindset is we're offering something for somebody and giving them our best level of service in that form of offering them something. And he's big on not trying to have somebody, not trying to sell something to somebody that they don't need, they don't want or can't afford, but putting having that conversation so that it's not even as if they feel like they're being sold to, but they are buying something that they already wanted to buy. And we are that vehicle for them to help them make a decision that they already wanted to make. He, he says that there's, the, so that's the big, that's the first mistake is thinking that you're selling to and not, I want to make sure I get this right. Yep. We're selling to people and not for them. The second big, biggest mistake is, he says, you don't make enough offers. And there's reasons why people don't make enough offers. According to Myron, he says they don't know how to make an offer. They don't know what to offer or what kind of offer to make. And they are afraid that somebody is going to say no if they make an offer. So in closing, I can tell you that what we have here in Viago can address 100% that biggest mistake by training. We just had an RTE. RTE could address each one of those. We we have the inner, the Viago inner circle, you, where it's like you've got a high income earner, earner, somebody who is killing it with with their business and 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 growing massive teams and sharing it with us. And all we have to do is press play. And of course, we got Elevate coming up. I am so excited about our, our official launch of, of Viago at Elevate being in Vegas, October 25th to the, to the 27th. If you don't have your ticket yet, you got to get it. There's one launch. It's like when Facebook first hit the, the, the market and IPO'd or went public. There's one time and that that happens. There, there's not going to be another relaunch of Facebook. There's not going to be another relaunch of um, Netflix. There, there, so we get the, the, the joy, the privilege, the honor of being at the right place at the right time and being able to have a ridiculous amount of fun. Learn how to build our business, learn the right mindset, learn how to be better at what we're doing, sharpening our skills. It's a perfect example of you bring the effort, we get taught the skills. So I'm excited. Please make sure you got your ticket. Would somebody be a magnificent person and put in the put in the chat the, the link for how to get a ticket for Elevate? You you do not want to miss this. I, I am excited that I already have my ticket, my flight, the room is booked. There, there that is going to be like no other. How many, how many times do we get to be? Yeah, guess what? Remember, remember when Viago launched? Yeah, I was there. See, see that picture with like a gazillion people in it? Yeah, that there I am right there. That we'll be able to do that because we are there making it happen. Making making that launch be what it's supposed to be of uh, so much fun, so many incredible memories that will be made, 
so much information to learn. We'll get to see people we probably haven't seen since the last Zoom or the art RTE, because it's you know it's just a little over a month away. But come join us. Be a part of the excitement. Be a part of something that the world has never seen before. So that's how I'm going to end this on the high note of I go, you go, we go, Viago. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you had at least one laugh. I did. And I, I appreciate you guys dropping stuff in the chat. and. Have a magnificent, a phenomenal, and incredible Thursday. See you next time.